Hey, what's going on, guys? God bless you. <clears throat> God bless you guys. Hello, Sandra, Charlene, Leo, Tegan, Angie, God bless you, Francisco, Jenilyn. All right. God bless you guys. God bless you. Good afternoon. God bless you guys. All right. So I want to make a video today about several different things. I want to convey my heart. I want to give you guys some information on what's going to be going on here uh, in, the, in the very, very, very near future. Uh, but I think mostly my request today and the reason why I'm making this video is to one, request prayer for us because what we're doing is probably the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, and I keep saying that and it's because the things that God is asking, or I would say asking, the things that God is commanding me to do and I'm putting in front of me continues to get harder. Um, I think that's a big part of why you guys see me less on social media because social media, unfortunately, even though I love you guys and I love having fellowship with you and I know I used to make a lot more videos, social media is more and more a, a distraction away from us being able to focus on the really difficult things that God is, is putting in front of us, as I said. So I'm just not making as many videos. I have so many things that I could post from past trips and I just haven't even had the motivation to edit the videos because um, there's so much going on and there's so much in front of us and it's heavy and it's hard, it's difficult, it's burdensome, and, but it's amazing and God is good and he is faithful. Uh, but I want to give some understanding and clarity uh, about all of this and put my heart in front of me so that you guys can see it. Hopefully, if you have, uh, I think if you're a Christian and you're God fearing and you love the Lord and uh, you don't have any ill motives, I think you'll be able to see my heart in all of this. Um, and so I'm hoping that's you. All right. First and foremost, we need your prayer because what we're doing and what God has had us doing is, is so incredibly hard to do. All right. Um, it is not something that you can do in your flesh. And it's something that we haven't seen in the world in a very long time. And uh, it's it's heavy and the attacks are hard. The spiritual oppression, the heaviness that comes against you is very difficult uh, you guys, please focus on the message, all right? Don't be messaging, please. I'm asking you. Stop commenting about everything else and let's just focus on what I'm saying. Please, I'm asking you. I'm begging you. Um, thank you, Lone Ranger. <laughs> nice name, by the way. Uh, let's just pray. Before I get into everything, let's just pray. I'm not going to make this long. I'm probably going to try and stay 15, 20 minutes because I have some things I have to go and do, but... Uh, let's just start in prayer. Please pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you would lift us up right now and you would breathe life into us. Forgive us for our sins. Take away the burdens and the cares and the worries and the fear and the anxiety and the depression and the heaviness that so many people are carrying. Lord, give us hope in you. Help us to walk in power. Help us to walk in grace and mercy and compassion. Help us to demonstrate the mind of Christ in everything that we do. Help us to walk in the spirit and to uh, exude the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit, Lord, that we might walk in love and joy, peace and patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control, and that the world might see your glory through our testimony, O oh God. And Lord, I pray as, that we pre as we prepare to go out and do your work, that you would put people in front of us and around us that can encourage, that can pray, that would be willing to go, that would say, yes, Lord, here I am, send me, Father. And that we would raise up as an army in this time. Lord, I see an army rising, but God, we need more. We need more foot soldiers. We need more who are out in the harvest preparing a way for your return and bringing the wheat into the barn. We need you, oh God, in this season to do those things that only you can do. Lord, we are weary with seeing Christians walking in the power of their flesh and in their human understanding. We're weary with seeing social media rife with strife, discord, and animosity. We're weary, oh God, with this present season where the church is torn in so many different ways. 
And the church is sick and the bride of Christ is not prepared. But God, we need you to transform us. We need an awakening. We need repentance. Shake us and stir in us and move in us and use us in a way that only you can, God, because we are weak without you, Lord. We can do nothing without you. And so, God, I pray that you would bring all of your people to a place of lowliness before you, God, that we would have humility knowing who we really are, that we would know without you we are nothing, that we are so little and we are so small. We have such little worth outside of you, oh God, but with you we can do all things. With you we are warriors. With you we are a royal priesthood and a holy nation, and you're raising up this army and power. And when we have your spirit, we walk in power. But Lord, help us to remember that you are the source and that you are our strength. And without you, we are feeble and weak. Lord, let every man take heed lest he fall. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, bring us into a place of intimacy and closeness. Help us to rise up as a people of prayer, not in the flesh, but in the spirit, God. Walking hand in hand in unity in the body of Christ, not with compromise, but with power. And Lord, I pray that you would give us godly wisdom and understanding because we are lacking it greatly in the body of Christ. We are torn to and fro, tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, with every different belief. We are so deceived with every conspiracy theory. And so many people are running around, Father, with so many different ideas, but they are not from you. So Lord, bring us low, bring us to repentance and help us to be prepared for this coming season. Oh God, we need you. Forgive us for our sins. Are we here? Okay, are we here? I don't know what happened. I'm sorry, guys. I do not know what happened. Are you there? I was in the middle of a very good prayer, and uh, <laughs> the video froze, but God is good. Let him be glorified. Are you guys there? Let me know. I think, all right. We're saying we're back. We're back. Amen. 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 The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Let's just pray real quick one more thing. Let's pray that the devil would not attack our efforts. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now that you would break the power of Satan, that you would break the power of the enemy, that every demon and force of darkness that would come against us would be torn down, destroyed, and burned up with holy fire, that its works would be considered null and void. Lord, we pray that you would break the power of every enemy attack. We claim victory. We claim freedom in the spirit. We claim, Lord God, that your word would go forth and it would accomplish everything that you have purposed for it in this time and in this season. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can you guys see me and hear me? My wife is texting me saying that it froze up, but I'm praying and I'm here and it's showing that it's going. So just tell me right now that you can hear me and see me. Okay, good. Thank you. She just texted me again. All right, guys, look, I want you to have a full understanding of what is going on and what is what, what the future holds, all right? So I'm gonna try and not look at your comments. I'm sorry, I, I do care about what you guys are saying, but I'm gonna hide it just so that I can convey the fullness of what I wanna say, and then I have to get going because I have some things that I have coming up uh, later on today. I have to prepare for that. So, okay, let me try and be short-winded. Um, we are going to Italy, like now, okay? And... Um, we have travel in front of us. When we arrive uh, after quarantine is over and we're able to go out and do what we need to do, uh, we are looking to meet up with local believers in Rome, all right? This is something that the Lord put in front of me about a month and a half, two months, I would say maybe two months ago. I, I don't know. I think maybe it's a month and a half, two months ago, something like that, where I was in prayer and I knew that we were going to be going to London to preach in sackcloth and to <clears throat> do what we did. You saw the videos. But in prayer, God showed me that there was something more that he wanted us to do. And so um, as I was preparing for that and I was in my prayer closet, God showed me that he wanted me to go to, to Rome and, and to one other place. And I began talking to Bia about it. And I said, hey, look, I think the Lord is wanting us to go to Rome. And she said, yeah, I, I think so, because he's he's put that on my heart as well. And so I said, wow, I feel like there's one other place that we need to go to. And uh, I began to look at the map and just prayerfully seek the face of God. And this is how it's happened so many times where I look at a map and God gives me such clarity. 
when my, I lay my eyes on a certain place and, and immediately I saw Egypt and I knew and I said, wow, I can't do this, Lord. This is too big for me. It's too difficult. And of course, as I'm going through this walk, God is requiring more and more of me. And, and it cuts against the flesh so hard. I, I, I know that you guys will, will not understand easily, but it's hard to preach in sackcloth. Okay, um, and, and when he told me that he would be sending us to Egypt, at the time it was not even possible because of restrictions, but right as, I would say the day I was flying to London, the restrictions opened up and uh, they weren't requiring a quarantine, they weren't requiring anything really to get into the country. Um, and so we were able to go to Egypt and, and do that which God had commanded us to do. Um, and God's grace was with us and I do believe that uh, I obeyed the Lord. It wasn't my best, uh, and sometimes I'm too hard on myself, but I do believe, I wish that I would stop getting notifications. Um, I do believe that I did my best, but I wanna do better. And so, um, you know, God, he speaks through us, but you have to understand that we are a broken lens because we are in sinful flesh. Yes, Jesus has conquered the power of sin in our life, and we are covered in the blood of Jesus daily, and we walk in the spirit but it's, we still walk in the brokenness of our flesh. We still have wounds that hold us back. We have, you know, um, just a lifetime of things that we carry and, and we seek God to unload those things and to give them to him daily. But it is a lifelong process of sanctification, progressive sanctification. And so as we move through life, uh, seeking to obey him, Sometimes we're at our best and we're like, man, you know, God spoke through me and it was so powerful and I feel like I just did everything. Um, I, I feel like it came out really good. And then sometimes the broken lens that we are it, it, because of fear or worry or any negative emotion that we carry, it's not going to be the most amazing thing. But at the end of the day, we have to be able to stand before God and say, Lord, I did my best. I gave you my all. I love you and I want to please you. I, I don't care what man says. I don't care what misunderstandings may come my way. I don't care uh, what, what sort of slander and gossip and misspeaking is spoken against me. In the last month, we have seen so many people come onto the videos and comment things that are just so not true. And, and people speaking for us, and they said, oh, I followed the ministry for six years, and I know this, this, and this, and it's so wrong. Um, so I think we have to just be so careful about what we speak and, and what we say that we know. You know, that's just a quick aside, but do we stand before God and, and, and look at him and say, Lord, I did my best, and I'm giving you my all, and I want to please you more than anything else, and that's what we have to be regardless of what people say and how they feel. We cannot be people pleasers. Um, I, we've been talking recently about, you know, if we show everything we do, people are like, wow, you guys show every single thing that you guys do. Like, that's crazy. Uh, which we never show everything that we do, by the way. But if we show a lot, people are like, wow, you guys are just showing everything you do. You know, it's, and then they say this and that, but then when we don't show a lot, people are like, wow, are you guys doing anything? Are y'all out like even laboring for the Lord? Have y'all just quit or you backslid? Like it's, and it's, that's not the case either. I will always serve my God and I'll always love him, but you have to understand the fullness and the heaviness of what God is calling us to do, that it is not easy to stand in a public place, in a hostile land like Egypt, where people will literally kill you for preaching in the open the gospel of Jesus Christ. They will kill you very quickly. Um, it's not easy. And I think we take for granted uh, so much. And we don't have a fullness of the understanding of what, what God is showing us and leading us into. I wanna, I wanna tell you something. We were reading a few chapters in Acts over the last couple of days, and, and God showed me something in that. And I wanna just share it with you real quick. You know, when Peter and John went to the temple, you see, they had run, or Peter did, he denied Jesus three times, and the disciples, they ran and, and hid, and they feared for their life when Jesus was being you know, uh, arrested and, and taken through the process before his crucifixion. They, many of them went and hid, and we know that John was there with uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, at the cross. But 
a lot of the disciples, they hid and they were afraid and it was a very weak moment for them. But when they witnessed the resurrection of Christ, something in them changed so profoundly that they then had a faith that they had never known. Even when walking with Jesus, they didn't understand the fullness of it. They saw it and even Jesus spoke about it. You know, he even prophesied that, you know, the temple would be torn down and rebuilt in three days and that, you know, he prophesied so much, but they couldn't see the fullness of it. And it was when the glory of, of Jesus Christ was before them and they touched his, his nail pierced hands and his, saw his feet and his hip was pierced and, uh, you know, his side was pierced and, and, and you know, he made uh, believers out of the doubters and, and he was with them and taught them and, and exhorted them and raised them up. And then when he left, they were to wait and pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit to fill them up. And without the power of the Holy Spirit, without being baptized in the Holy Spirit of God, beyond your theology of today, because I know we have many different denominations in here, you have to be filled with the glory of God to be able to do things that your flesh can't do. Regardless of what people come and say on these videos where they say, oh, you're just doing this for attention, there will never be a day where preaching in sackcloth in a public place faced with ridicule and mockery, there will never be a day where that is like something you wake up to and you're like, man, this is going to be fun. Never. And you can't do it in your flesh. I mean, maybe if there's something wrong with you, you got some kind of weird mental sickness going on where you need deliverance and, and all this and your mentality is broken, but I'm a very clear headed person and I'm very analytical and I, I, I pray about everything and I, I'm very thoughtful and purposeful in everything that I do. And there is never a time where I'm like, I am so excited to put on sackcloth and go out and preach. It doesn't happen. Do I obey God? Yes. Am I doing it with the fullness of my heart? Yes. A half hearted sacrifice is not worthy of the kingdom of God. We have to give God our full heart and I give him my full heart when I do these things, but there is never a time where it's easy, where I look at it and I say, man, I'm loving every bit of this. It doesn't happen. But I look back on it and I'm like, Lord, I am so thankful that I'm able to please you with my obedience. So when Peter and John, you see in Acts 2, they were filled with the Spirit. They were in the upper room. They were in one mind and one accord, and the Spirit of God came. And they spoke in other tongues, and they were filled with the Spirit. And something changed in them where they now had a power. You see, they now had a power and a boldness they didn't have before, and that's so incredibly important. So what do we see in Acts chapter 3? We see them prepare to go and confront the very people that crucified their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is, I've never seen this before, but it's something that God revealed. Just the fullness and the catalyst of everything that happened in Acts 3 and 4. You see, they went to confront, they went into the temple in Jerusalem to confront the very people that put Christ on the cross. And outside of the gate, they saw a man that had been there begging and he was expecting money. And he said, uh, he said such, and you know the famous words that Peter said, silver and gold have I none. But he commanded that man to rise up and walk, and he did. And it said as they went into the temple, this man, testifying of the glory of God and his healing power, clung to Peter and John with a faith that stirred the hearts of the people. And he said 5,000 people came to faith and believed because of the testimony of that one man. You see, when we walk in obedience, God prepares a way through a testimony. It says in Revelation, we've overcome by the blood of the lamb and the power of our testimony. So we have to go wherever we're going. We have to go with a testimony. We have to go ready to obey him and to be able to give account, to be able to speak on the hope that is found in us. And we cannot do that in the flesh. So Peter and John, they went into the temple to confront these people. And you saw uh, Caiaphas, and I think that's his name, and you know the, the high priest and all of these people, these same Pharisees that stirred the hearts of the people a different way to, to release Barabbas and to put Christ on the cross. The same, very same people that were responsible for the death of Jesus by the will of God, but the very same people that were responsible for causing the crucifixion of Christ, they stood boldly before. And they said, this very same Jesus Christ that you crucified has done this thing. How beautiful is that? 
this same Jesus that you crucified. The same Jesus that was on the cross that said, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. The same Jesus that lives inside of you, if you are his, the same Jesus that wants your whole soul. He is calling you today. And our obedience has to bear witness and testify of the hope that is found in us. This is not the time to be living on social media. This is not the time to be throwing out every single conspiracy theory that you can find and to to get caught up in the lies and the distortions and the perversions. The enemy wants to confuse your mind. And in Jesus, there is truth and truth alone. You have to get in your prayer closet. You're not going to find truth on social media. Not the fullness of the truth that you need. And I understand we're on YouTube and social media right now, but I'm telling you, you're not going to find God through me. You're going to find God on your knees and through his word. I am just a testimony of what God can do in a man. And I don't claim to be anyone. I do not claim. I am not putting on sackcloth trying to be one of the two witnesses. I am not putting on sackcloth trying to be some come back from the dead or, or translated back from heaven, biblical character that your mind wants me to be. I am not trying to be anyone else but Philip Blair. And you need to know that. But years ago in 2016, God instructed me to make a sackcloth suit and to put it on and to go in front of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. and to testify and to prophesy to the nation right before Donald Trump was even uh, elected into office. And many, you know, many videos I made after spoke against a lot of what the Christian rhetoric and Christian, uh, what a lot of people were saying I was speaking against. I was saying I was speaking things that a lot of people weren't speaking. And you go back and you see those things. You see God take us through 10 cities in 10 days at the height of lockdowns. And you see seven cities in seven days a few months later. And God took us through Brazil throughout the capital and, and you know and we saw what God God had done amazing miracles in Brazil through bringing his people back to him and we see things continuing today and then God has taken us now into different cities throughout Europe into London and then in, in Africa and Egypt and you know we prayed about whether to preach in Kenya in sackcloth and and God held me he he, he caused me to abstain from that and we went in there and we just did our mission. We went into Kenya and we fed the poor and we provided Bibles and we preached in the churches and we uh, discipled and we raised up brothers. And now we're doing so much good stuff in Kenya. And I'm not saying that, uh, I'm saying that only to glorify the Lord. What I'm saying is God sent us into Kenya and, you know, we, we didn't go and we preached. In, we didn't, we're not looking to just go and preach in sackcloth in every place that we can go because that's not what this is about. It's not just to be a spectacle. We're not trying to just be this crazy man running around doing things that other people aren't doing, but we are saying, God, I am willing to do things that other people are not willing to do. And I do believe that God is giving us the grace and the power to do things that we haven't seen anyone do, if ever, and, and, and if ever, in a thousand years, two thousand years, and, and, and it's the heaviness and the burden of that is terrifying. That we're gonna have to stand before God and give account of all that we are doing. And if we're outside of the will of God, if we have this thing wrong, if we're deceived and we're, you know, walking through some deception or spirit of divination or whatever, then we're going to give account. And that is a very scary thing. But I am confident of this very thing that God will finish the work that he has started in me. And it will likely end in my head being removed from my neck. I hate to say it, but I think I was born for a reason. And I think that God would not have us do such heavy things. And it, you know, by the grace of God, I don't know how I'm going to go, but I, I just don't, th I think when my time is over, I'm hoping it will be, um, you know, I'm hoping that it will be a while from now. But I think that one day when the work is over that he has for my family to do, then he will take me and you know what we should want to be um, we should want to live that life that God requires of us in the fullness of whatever it might be I'll say that but we have to be willing to count the cost and I know so many people are 
um, or saying that they 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 are way they're willing to count the cost. And and I know some of you have probably lost your jobs uh, because you've resisted these vaccines. And, and I pray that God is with you and He would give you an even better job. And there's strength and power in that, and there's resolve in that, and there's hope in that. And I praise God for your your strength in this time because it's so very hard to stand up for what you believe in in this current world. Um, you know, but that's not the end of it. And someday we are going to have to, you know, to to give up so much. There will come a day where we're going to have to face. I don't I don't even know what it's going to look like. I don't pretend to know. I only know what God shows me. But I do know that we are living in the climax of God's story for the church. We're living in the best part, but it's also the most difficult part. It's also where the greatest war happens. And there are more demons parading through the world than ever before. The storm is here. Darkness has fallen and we are engulfed in darkness. And we see so much technology that's coming out where we see uh, these, these chips that are going to be going into brains. And we see, um, you know, this quantum technology. I don't even understand it, but all this like really, really small particle technology that's being developed through secret knowledge being revealed to the world, probably through all sorts of evil things happening in behind closed doors and in the shadows where people are trying to become as God. They're trying to be immortal. They want to have a, a you know, a, they want to be united uh, in thought and in mind to have this brain cloud. And I don't want to get too much into it, but this is the same as it was since the beginning, the, the, the people who live in darkness and who are in power and who run this world, they are seeking to become as God. And that's what the enemy wants from them. And um, it's going to be hard to stand up in this season and do what God has called us to do. So I am willing to count the cost and prepare a way and to do what God has called me to do. But a lot of it, it's going to require me focusing and, and not being on social media as much. And it doesn't mean that we're doing less. It just means that we're showing less or it means that we're praying more. It means that we're trying to to be the best that we can be for our Lord. And uh, it doesn't mean that we don't want to have fellowship with you. I, I it is my desire that I could do this, what I'm doing right now with you, being online with you and speaking to you. It's my desire that I could do it more often, um, but it's, uh, it's not what I see God wanting me to do in this season. I have a burden to write. I pray that uh, I'm asking you to pray for me. I, I started a book several years ago and I had a block for a long time to, to, to work on it and you know focus on other things and uh, I feel such a burden for that. And that is a precious thing to me. And I am going out on a limb in faith because I know that anytime you uncover these precious things, people want to attack you in that area or pray against you. Uh, I know that there are not just Christians that watch these videos, but I'm asking you, and, and I truly believe that the power of God is greater. Uh, you know, about a year ago, I mentioned this on video and so many people prayed and I had such clarity and such motivation in that season to write. And, and I did. Uh, but then, you know, that block came back where it was just like the enemy trying to create a separation and prevent me from doing it. So I'm praying or I'm asking you to pray, believing that your prayers are so much more powerful and profound than any attack the enemy can bring. So please pray for me in the season that I can do the fullness of what God has for me in every area. Uh, if you're with me, I know we have about 500 people on the, the broadcast right now. If you are in Italy, reach out to me, Okay. Uh, Torch of Christ, T-O-R-C-H-O-F-C-H-R-I-S-T, I hope I spelled that right, at gmail.com. Tell me that you're in some area of Italy and um, we're going to be going to several different places and we're going to be preaching. We're going to be traveling light. It's not going to be with big cameras and a lot of heavy things because uh, we want to try and preach in a lot of different locations and bringing all this heavy equipment can be cumbersome sometimes. We're going to travel light. We're just going to try and preach everywhere we go. We're going to try and be a witness everywhere we go. And, and I'm really excited about what God is going to do. And hopefully that will allow us to, to do some live videos. Hopefully it will allow us to put some videos out more quickly and more, more regularly. Uh, but the biggest thing that we have to do right now that's staring us in the face is we're going to go to the Vatican and we're going to preach in sackcloth and we're going to call out evil for what it is. We're going to call repentance uh, to the country and to the, the Catholic Church and to all those who are doing evil in the shadows. And it's going to be difficult. I mean, imagine yourself there doing that. It, it is going to be difficult. And I don't know what it will look like. I don't know what we're going to be allowed to do and where we're going to be allowed to go. I don't know. I'm walking in faith. 
but I believe that with all of my heart that God is sending us. I believe with all of my heart that he is going to enable us and empower us and put us in position. He's going to bring brothers and sisters into our midst who are going to strengthen us in that country who uh, Italian believers, I'm looking for you. I'm searching for you. Come join with us. Be a part of that day with us because we want a group of Christians with us when we go and do this. And I think right now, hopefully uh, I don't have the date wrong, but I think on the 4th, I think on the 4th of November is when we are planning to be at the Vatican in sackcloth to preach the message that God has given us on the 4th of November. Thank you, Bia, uh, for verifying that. On the 4th of November, he is calling us to be there. That is what we're planning, and we want Italian believers with us. Uh, even better, if you're willing to put on sackcloth, we can go in and make a sackcloth suit for you on the day before. If you are an Italian man of God and you speak very good English, how much more profound and impactful would it be for you to, um, to translate from English into Italian so that all who are there might hear and uh, even not just for the Vatican preaching, but for uh, all the other places in Rome that we're going to be preaching. And, and we'll kind of go into the schedule further on uh, later on as far as where we're going to be and what we're going to be doing in Italy. But it's going to be a lot of lot of preaching, a lot of street preaching. Ita uh, the Italians are, are largely lost. You go into all of Europe, you know, people are, who follow the ministry are like, man, why are you going to all these countries? Like, have you been to Europe lately, guys? Europe is lost. England, this country that used to know God so profoundly, is lost, so lost, so completely lost. Uh, the United States, we have a good because we still at least have some sort of Christian identity. We're in the midst of war and we're fighting for it, but there still remains so many Christians who are in love with God and the things of God. And, and this is very much a still, uh, you know, pockets of, uh, of being a Christian nation. But in England, man, we're, they're gone. And Italy so much more so. And, and we see, you know, Paul was martyred in Italy and the Roman Catholic Church has been in Italy for a long time. And, and many of us have different opinions, but I, I, you know, we're going there to preach not and say, good job, guys. We're going to go and preach against the things that we are seeing. And it's going to rile so many people up. It's going to cause so much anger and, and pushback. And we're going to get attacked and we know that it's coming. But hopefully we have the strength to stand and hopefully we, tr we haven't lied to ourselves and we can say, Lord, I have counted the cost. And we're willing and able to do that which he's called us to do. So if you're an Italian man of God and you're willing to walk with us in that, in that place and in that time after we're able to, to go free, uh, you know, we're, we're all facing restrictions, travel restrictions are real. So once we're able to, to get out of that and to be able to, to go out, which I think is on the 4th, then we'll be able to go and do that. And, and we want to meet up with you. So please um, reach out to us uh, because we want to, to work with you. Um, I think that's the fullness of most of what I want to say. If you're just joining us, uh, it's 34 minutes long almost. Please go back and watch the whole video because I think there's a lot of things that so many people need to hear uh, because there's so much that's being said about me and, and the ministry and, you know, and it's just know what the truth is. Okay. And we have to be so very careful. I am urging you and, and encouraging you today. Get along with God, spend time with him. I want to do the same. I want to be better. I want to do better. I want to be a better Christian. I don't want to to walk in in impatience or frustration or, or any of these fleshly ways I think a lot of us struggle with on a daily basis. I want to be the child of God and the man of God that he has created me to be and to walk in the fullness of that. And that's what we should all be seeking to do daily. And I think sometimes we get so caught up in what everyone else is doing that we fail to look at ourselves. We're not looking in the mirror long enough or hard enough or honest enough to see that we have so much in our own life that needs to be fixed. And I'm not saying that we're walking in, in habitual sin. It's not even about that. It's about perfecting our character through being able to see life and, and the word of God and, and the fullness of everything through 
the clearest lens possible. And if we're looking at life through that broken lens that we are because of wounds and the traumas of yesteryear and all the things that we went through as a child and so much that haunts us from the past, you see what I'm saying? We're like, we're still in different ways attacked from the things that come from our past, but we're trying to be the fullness of the son or daughter of God that we're created to be. And it's a, a long-term thing. But over the long term, that lens needs to be as whole and complete and clear as possible so that when God speaks through us, when God shows us things, that we're not distorting it through limited understanding or lack of biblical knowledge. Everything that we hear and we see and God reveals, we have to put under the microscope of the word of God because the enemy comes in seeking to devour seeking to deceive. These angel, or these demons come as angels of light. They want to try and speak for God and deceive you and say, you know, they'll, they'll pretend to be the voice of God. And so many Christians are being led astray because they think they're hearing from the Lord and they're not. And that's the scariest place to be in life, in my opinion, is to think that we're hearing from God and be going in a direction when we're being misled. We're being misinformed. We're being deceived. Where God is telling us to, or excuse me, where, um, where we're speaking, but God has not told us to speak. Where we're prophesying, but God has not told us to prophesy. Let every man walk in that fear of God. Because fear is the beginning, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. And if we walk with a holy, reverent fear of God, knowing that, man, I'm going to give account for everything I'm doing, then it will help us to be much more purposeful and thoughtful methodical and, and, and just, it will give us pause before we go out and just do any foolish thing in zeal. We have so much zeal, but we are largely as a body of Christ lacking wisdom. We're lacking wisdom. And we need a touch from God in this season, guys. We need God so much. It is such a difficult time, but God is so faithful and he loves you so much. You have to know that. And if you are in love with God and you wanting to obey God, the things that he's gonna call you to do in this season will not be easy. You have to come to terms with that. Because, you know, my wife and I have been talking recently, lukewarmness in the body of Christ is our biggest threat. Our body, our flesh longs for comfort and Comfortable, just to be comfortable in every aspect. If the room gets too cold, we adjust the thermostat. If it gets too hot, we adjust the thermostat. If we go outside and we're too hot, we want a cold shower. If we go outside and it's too cold, we want a hot shower. We're longing to reach that homeostasis. We want to feel balanced in our flesh. We don't want discomfort. But God will never tell you or will never call you to a life of comfort comfort and, and, and peace. If you are to be a warrior, if you are to be a soldier fighting in the army of God, the battlefield will never be an easy place to be. And you're never going to be that warrior that he's created you to be if you're not putting on the armor of God and getting out there. You can study the textbooks the world over, learning about how to be a soldier, but until you go through training and you go and fight in a war, you will never be. You might have a knowledge of that you'll never be. And you can read about the exploits of David fighting Goliath and being this warrior for the Lord, not just in the flesh, but in heart, that he was a man longing after the heart of God. And you can read about, you know, so many different characters throughout the world, uh, in the history of the world, who went to the stake, burned at the stake through their faith. I read about a young woman on Facebook last night. Somebody shared something where there was this young lady, 22 years old, who was a German uh, during the time of the Nazi Holocaust, and she distributed anti-Nazi um, papers and information, and they eventually, you know, they executed her. But some of the things she said was so profound, and it moved my heart. And we're never going to be able to obey God if we are looking to to maintain peace and to never stir up discomfort or to never bring to light truth that a, a dark and deceived world needs to hear. We're never going to be the fullness of the man and woman of God that he's created and called you to be if we're sitting in churches waiting for people to just show up. 
The church system is so broken. The way that we do things are so broken. Peter and John, as I spoke of earlier, please go back and listen to that. When they went into the temple in Jerusalem, this is their coming out moment. They're confronting the very people that crucified their Lord and Savior. They go into the temple speaking to the Pharisees and the high priest. They did not go in there and sit in a pew and wait for the Pharisees to call them forward so that they could give a testimony. You understand? So many people against open air preaching, but Paul never went into a city and found a synagogue and sat in the front row waiting for them to invite him forward so that they could, he could give account of what Jesus had done in his life and the lives of so many others. Paul never waited for a, a, an invitation he went there boldly proclaiming the word of God in power and glory and demonstrating through acts of faith the realness of the Holy Spirit moving in his life. He went there testifying and he was stoned and they were thrown into prison. They faced death at every corner, discomfort in every moment. They weren't waiting for people to just honor them and, and, and bring them forward and say, oh, brother, give account of what Je they, they didn't believe in Jesus. This was something different that they were doing. They were testifying of a man that the world knew as a radical that was put on a cross and that many people believed to still be dead. But they were out there saying the same Jesus that you crucified. Peter and John, I'm speaking of as they went into the temple in Jerusalem, the same Jesus that you crucified, he is alive and he did this very thing today that this man, he could not walk and now he walks. This same man that couldn't do this, now he can and it's by Jesus Christ alone. And they stirred the pot, they shook things up, they weren't looking to maintain the peace because Jesus said, I came not to bring peace, but division. I came not to bring peace, but a sword. And it doesn't mean walk in your flesh and be contentious and throw out conspiracy theories. It doesn't mean walk in your flesh and be angry and go out and just try and stir people up through chastisement. It doesn't mean go and stir up people up by speaking uh, evil things or, or condemning them or calling them names. It means walk in the power of God, walk in the love of God, give testimony of what Jesus has done through you, but be willing to count the cost. And when you count the cost, he's going to tell you to do things that you've never done before. He's going to tell you to do things that you don't have the strength to do in your own power. It's going to cost you everything. And if you are that man or woman of God that truly with, with no, you don't have any ulterior motives. If you are that man of God who truly wants to please God and obey him and to walk in the fullness of who he created you to be, it's going to take you down a painful road of tears and suffering. Peter, James, and John arguing about who would be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. What did he say? They wanted to sit next to him, prepare a place. Let us sit with you. He said, can you, can you drink from the same cup that I drink from? Can you be baptized in that same baptism? Are we willing to count the cost? Are we willing to suffer for the sake of Christ so that he might be glorified? Are we willing, even through our tears and our pain and our burdens, and when we feel like we can't go another step and we say, Lord, I'll praise you, but I can't do this anymore. Are we willing to say, Lord, I give you everything. I want to please you. Get me through it. Are we willing to count the cost so that no matter what, no matter what our flesh feels, no matter how much our pride is damaged, how, how, no matter how much our ego is destroyed, we need to pray for our pride and our ego to be destroyed. But in the midst of everything, are we willing to lay it down and say, God, wherever you take me, I will go. If it causes me to lose everything, I will go. If a man wants to be built up, by the Lord, he must first be torn down. God will strip everything from you to show you that he alone is what you need. And then he'll restore. God doesn't want you to be poor. He doesn't want you to walk in a spirit of poverty. I'm not preaching a prosperity gospel, but the fullness of God 
is also to have everything that you need, to not lack in any way. If you're a Christian lacking, pray more, pray harder, pray with more faith. Keep asking, keep seeking. Don't try and make things happen on your own. Pray and wait and seek the face of God and say, God, what do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Show me a way. God will supply every need. That's his promise. It's not a recommendation. It's not just an encouragement. God will supply every need, and we have to believe in that continually and constantly. What we are going to do in Rome is, I don't want to be dishonest with myself. I'm sitting here, I'm trying to think. I, as far as I can tell, it might be the hardest thing I've ever done. And I keep having to say that, and I'm not saying that to be boastful at all. I'm saying that it's too big for me. I'm saying in my flesh, I can't do it. But I believe in God. And I hope in him. Being well known on social media, it's not fun, okay? This is not, I'm not doing any of this to be well known. I actually, at this point in my life, wish I was less known. But God has put me in this position, in this place of my life, and I'm going to accept it in whatever way I have to so that I can please my God. And you have to be willing to do the same thing. To be willing to please your God no matter what. And it will, he will take you into the most difficult things, the most difficult areas. He will take you into that place where you're like, I can't do it. But you know what? It's by his might, it's by his power, not by our flesh, not by our, our efforts. Or It's not pride that takes me out here to preach in sackcloth. That's insane to think that. It is literally the antithesis of pride. It is so very difficult to put, I do not, there's not one ounce in my blood or in my bones or in my flesh that gets excited about putting on sackcloth. Every single time it is so difficult and it cuts against the flesh. And I think that's the point of it and the power of it. There's no pride when a man puts on sackcloth, there's no pride. I love you guys. That's all I have. Please pray for us. If you're an Italian Christian, please reach out to us. We're going to be preaching in Rome, uh, not just in sackcloth at the Vatican, calling them to repentance, but we're going to be going throughout Rome. Uh, in, in, we're going to be uh, in, we're actually leaving them, coming back to Rome. So it's going to be a little bit spread out, but hopefully we can put out a schedule for you to join us. And then we're going to be going some other places. Reach out to us, Italian Christians. We want you with us. We need your uh, fellowship. We need just your encouragement. We want to go there in strength. Whenever we preach at the Vatican, we want you to be with us. All right. So if you want to witness uh, th this thing that we are doing, this very difficult thing that God has called us to do and that we're going in a faith and obedience to do, then please uh, join with us. And uh, we, we are excited to meet with you. Please reach out torchofchrist at gmail.com. T-O-R-C-H-O-F-C-H-R-I-S-T at gmail.com. And tell us that you're Italian and that you believe in the Lord and that you're born again and that you want to be with us on the 4th of November. Uh, we're going to Italy here very, very soon. And uh, once we're released and allowed to go out, we will be going to preach. And we're going to preach everywhere we go. And it's going to be good, but it's going to be difficult. But we believe in God. All right, we hope in him. I got to go. Thank you, guys. Love you so much.